Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all and bless you indeed. Indeed. And that's why we are here in order for Him to use our lips so that you may understand His Word, understand His Word, and understand His advices, His thoughts. And then, yes, once you understand God's thoughts, you will be able to decide, obviously, for what is right. You are going to make the right choices, isn't it? If you have the direction of God for your life, the chances of you making mistakes are very small in your choices because you already have the direction of God for yourself. Do you understand? This is very... This is very great. So pay attention. I will repeat it. If you understand the Word of God, it's because God revealed Himself to you. This is too glorious. It's magnificent. Do you know what it means to have a revelation from God for us? for you who are perhaps lost in, in doubts and fears, anxious, worried, lost in your afflictions, in your ruins, in your misery, whether they are physical or spiritual, you are insecure, so, when you have the Word of God and you understand it, then He, God, is the one who reveals or revealed His will to you. And then you know what you need to do. If you don't do it, it's another story. You have the right to, to deny, but you also have the right to obey, to follow, because you know that by doing His will, which is what is righteous, is righteous. Did you know that in Greek, the New Testament was written in Greek? And what happens in the Greek language? Righteousness, God's righteousness actually means the will of God. So, when you do the will of God, when you become a person who is righteous, you were then made righteous by God Himself, by His own word. Jesus said that. He said to his disciples like this, you have already been cleansed by the word that you heard. <laughs> Which means that the word of God not only gives us understanding and knowledge of God's will, but it also washes us, it purifies us. It removes those dark thoughts, those silly thoughts, those foolish, useless thoughts. It removes what only bothers us and hinders us from making the right choices. So when you understand the will of God, the Holy Spirit revealed to you His word, His will. Anyway, we've been speaking about righteousness, the righteousness of God. When Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted 
for righteousness sake, because of my word, because of my name, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, meaning because they've done my will, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So someone asked, Bishop, what do I do? What do I do in order to have an encounter with God? Well, the answer is there. You only have to make a 180 degree turn, meaning if you are going to the wrong direction, if you are going towards the direction of your sins and unrighteousness and your mistakes and flaws and failures, then you make a turn of 180 degrees and then you start walking out towards what is right, what is fair, what is clean, what is of integrity and correct, what is truthful. If you do that, in this path that you follow, that you will be following, you you have an encounter with Jesus. You you know Jesus. You are going to know the one who justifies us, that makes you be a new creation. So you are going to know him for who he is. Not only know him because you heard about him, because many people have a lot of information about God and information about Jesus as well, but they don't know Him. Many people have a vast knowledge about the Holy Spirit, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. So what's the point? So you have to have this thirst, this hunger. Oh my God, it's not fair. Come on. I've been hearing about you, but I don't know you. It's not fair. I want to know you. Which child is happy to not know their father? If I am your, your child, I want to know you. Isn't it true? Tell me. For example, how many people are traumatized for not having had the reference of a mother, a father, they didn't know their parents and people grow full of frustrations. But when people know the Father, ah, how wonderful. Now imagine God. He wants to reveal Himself to everyone who is thirsty and hungry for righteousness. And those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are those who start walking towards the direction of righteousness, of the will of God, doing what is right. So, for example, a lady said, Look, I was fired from my job because of my faith in Jesus. Praise God! How wonderful! So, you are blessed. You are blessed. Why? Because you suffered for the sake of the Lord Jesus or because of the Lord Jesus. So, this is the persecution that we have been going through and all the true children of God go through here on earth the disciples of the Lord Jesus, the followers of the Lord Jesus, they have to suffer injustices. They have to. They have to suffer persecution in order for the Father to be sanctified, glorified in them. So when a person is sacrificed, when a person is, let's say, cruelly wronged, defamed, slandered, they are made fun of because of Jesus, because of His righteousness, 
because they are living in truth. They even lost their job because they spoke the truth. Oh, I have to lie, then I'm not going to work here anymore. Oh, I have to sleep around, then I'm not going to work here anymore. I have to, to please my boss, I have to sleep with my boss in order to have a, a greater chance at work. No, I'm not going to do that, I will leave. This means to live in righteousness. This means to walk in righteousness. This is what it means to walk in truth. This is what it means to go towards God's direction. I'm walking, I am going towards this faith. Of course, they will persecute you, they will speak bad things about you, they will call you fanatic. The first thing they usually say, the devil will find a billion excuses in order for you to give up. However, however, if you truly are going towards the, the right direction, you persevere. You say, no, I am not going to sell myself out in order for me to have some benefit now because in eternity I will lose. So I would rather lose now to gain later on my salvation. So Jesus, dear friends, is not an ideology, a thought. Jesus is not a religion, not at all. Jesus is the Lord and Savior. He is the one who makes us righteous before God. So if you do what is right, walking according to moral standards and being honest, according to your truth, or God's truth, I mean, according to your integrity, your character, you can be certain that sooner or later you are going to know the Lord Jesus. And when you know Him, then, dear friend, it's like they say out there, you just have to enjoy it, just celebrate. So, Pay attention, when you know Jesus, He justifies you, He makes you righteous. And once you are made righteous and justified, made righteous, then you have peace, peace. You know, let me tell you something, if a person goes before the judge, and the judge already has the sentence in his hands. He has already a pen ready to sign and determine the sentence, whether he is going to be sentenced or freed. The judge will decide. When you receive forgiveness, look, you are free, you are forgiven. What happens? Wow, praise God. Praise God. Wow. You are going to live at peace, eat at peace, live a peaceful life because you won't be in debt with anybody. And that's what Jesus does to us when He justifies us, when we meet Him and He forgives us, then we enter into a state of grace, a state of peace, peace. For example, do you want to know if you are in communion with God? You just have to evaluate how much peace you have. It's pointless for you to say, oh, I have peace. But deep down, you know that there is no peace. Then if you have no peace, it's because you, you are not forgiven. If you die with this doubt, you are going to hell. Because you are not forgiven. You are going to go to the prison of jail. But if you die in this situation, if we die at peace, you know, without any guilt with anybody, without any guilt before God, then we are not going to die. We are going to sleep and be promoted to the presence of God. 
So you who have been, who have suffered and even groaned because of the persecutions you suffered, but persecutions because you remained righteous, you remain faithful, you live according to the word of God, according to his will, then let them accuse you, let them slander you, let them do whatever they want, but they won't be able to touch your peace. Your peace will be within you because it's the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of peace inside of you. The Apostle Paul goes to the point of saying here, he says like this, when a person is righteous before God, pay attention, look at that. When a person has their conscience cleansed and purified and they are at peace with themselves and above all with God, then they have nothing to fear, nothing to fear because they walk with the head held high. So the Apostle Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, says like this, Who, he's asking a question, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Those who have been justified, those who live in peace with God. So they can lie about us. They can accuse us of this and that and the other. They can call this and that and the other. It doesn't matter what they say, what they will say. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Who can bring a charge or accuse those who have been elected by God and they are at peace with Him? They've had an encounter with Him. They were born of Him, born of the Holy Spirit. They have God's peace in them. So those who accuse, those who curse, those who put a plague, a curse on those who are of God and curse them and so on and so forth, pour them. They don't know the hell that is waiting for them in the future. Because if God chose us, if God chose you and you are at peace, then they can do whatever they want. They can commit injustices and you will keep this peace forever. As long as you continue to live with integrity. So Paul says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect, those chosen by him? If God justified them, if God forgave them, if they are forgiven, then who can bring anything against them? It's what happened in the past. When the Jews, the rebellious Jews, rose against Moses and God, God himself defended Moses. Look, with the prophets I speak through dreams and visions, but with Moses I speak face to face. And you are speaking badly about him. Don't you fear me? Don't you... Hasn't the penny dropped that you are running the risk of losing your life by speaking ill about my servant? Therefore, dear friend, so is with you. If you, perhaps you are not that person that is seen, that is greatly used by God for everyone to see, but you are faithful, you have your conscience clean, you are at peace with God then God keeps you. And if anybody comes against you, pour them. Because God is going to avenge you. They will have to deal with God. As it happened to those rebellious people. Because the ground opened and they and all of their family members, children, wives, everything, everything, the entire family of the rebellious ones, 
the ground opened up and they were swallowed up because they were rebelling against an anointed one. And even Moses' sister herself, Miriam, who, who was faithful to Moses, but a certain moment of her life, she started complaining against Moses and rebelling against him. What did God do? She allowed leprosy to come on her, and she was put to shame before the entire congregation of the people of Israel because she rose against a servant of God. Therefore, dear friend, don't worry if anyone comes against you. Do not worry if they speak badly about you. Do not worry if they, oh, they did this or that. It doesn't matter. Is your conscience clean? Are you well with yourself and with God? Then be at peace. Because who shall bring who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who? And they think that they will go unpunished? No way. Not at all. They will suffer the consequences. Anyway, this is very nice, isn't it? And then Paul says, he says like this, Who? Speaking of those who have been justified, he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Who? 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 As it is written, for your sake, meaning for God's love, for the God's sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for this slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us, who saved us, who justified us, who gave us peace. For, he concludes, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Meaning, this love is peace. It's pointless to say, oh, the love of God. But then you have no peace. When you speak of the love of God without peace, then the love you have is not from God. It can be love from anybody else except from God. Because the love of God brings peace. If you have the love of God, but you have no peace, it's because something is wrong with you. Now, if you have the love of God, you are forgiven, forgiven, and you have peace. Because forgiveness brings peace. As certain as God exists, when He forgives, He gives peace. Peace. And this peace is personal and very intimate and untransferable. It's something yours. It's personal. It's private. It's you and God. God and you. It's the Holy Spirit. We are going to speak more about this tomorrow. May God bless you. And today, we are going to have the Lord's Supper for the family of God. For God's loved ones, God's children, the Lord's Supper is an intimate communion for God's family. When Jesus did the Lord's Supper, only the disciples took part in it. Of course, Judas was there as well, but Judas had been with him throughout his entire ministry. He was there anyway, but in the moment of the Lord's Supper, he was revealed. So, you, dear friend, who 
want to have an intimate communion with Jesus, the Lord's Supper is an excellent, excellent opportunity for you to do so because you will place your life on the altar, renew your vows with Him. And that's why Jesus said that whoever does not eat of my flesh or drink of my blood have no part with me. So in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, we have the Lord's Supper, perhaps of the reconciliation, who knows. God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Praise God.